Thank you for joining us for worship today. I'm Pastor Matt, the pastor at Christ the King Lutheran Church here in Westchester, Ohio. Please be sure to visit our website at www.ctkluth.org for more information about our mission and ministry, including our Wednesday evening collaborative worship with churches from the Cincinnati area. And now I invite you to focus your hearts and your minds on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we listen to and watch this prelude that's been prepared by the work of the people. In our pain, our blue, our beautiful, our hard, our messy, our ugly, our struggles, and our joys. God is with us. God accompanying us. God alongside us. God amid us. God among us. God beside us. including us, God near us, God plus us, God upon us, God as companion to us, God side by side us, God in the thick of us, in the thick of our humanity, in the middle of this weary world. Is with us in the gift and in the muck and mire of real life. God with the world in the thick of the beautiful and the messy. In that a weary world rejoices. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of heaven and earth, you come in close and make us yours. Equip us by your Spirit to confess our sin, embrace your forgiveness, and seek the way you set before us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. With honesty of heart, let us now confess our sin. Merciful God, forgive us. Our will is handcuffed to sin, and we cannot break free. We have spoken when we should have kept quiet. We were silent when we should have said something. We acted when we knew better. We were still when we know we should have moved. For the wrong we have done, for the good we have failed to do, have mercy on us through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. People of God, look to the Son. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, given to us to heal and set us free because God loves us so much, loves you so much, that he sent Jesus to die on the cross and rise again to take away our sin. Take hold of the promise of eternal life and assurance of the forgiveness of your sins. Amen.
Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Romans. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void, for the law brings wrath. But where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations. 
according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us, who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's time for our gospel interruption. I have in my hands what looks like a video game joystick, but it's actually a control stick, a remote control for a drone. One of the cool things about this drone is it's got a camera in there. One of the bad things about it is that I'm not really all that good at controlling it very well. I haven't had a whole lot of flight time. And so it makes it difficult for me to get this drone to hold still. But the good news is that if it does crash, the motor will shut off. But I'm still learning how to use this. I thought that all of my time with video games and using my thumbs on joysticks in my ill-spent youth would help me with this. But the truth is, I have really terrible control over this drone. I can't make it do what I want it to do. In today's gospel lesson, we hear a story of Jesus talking about how he is going to suffer and die and rise again. Now, Peter the Apostle takes Jesus aside and says to him, you can't say this, you have to stop. And Jesus looks at Peter and says, get behind me, Satan. Your mind is focused on human things while I am focused on the divine. Too often we think that we have a joystick that we can somehow control God with, that God will do what we want. The truth is God's plans are God's own, and sometimes it is difficult for us to see what God is doing. But in the end, it is God who is in control. Jesus suffers and dies and rises again so that the world may have eternal life. If that plan is not fulfilled, you and I and the Apostle Peter who pulls Jesus aside will not be saved. And sometimes there are things beyond our own human vision or our own limitations that we simply don't understand. And so it's a matter of faith that we have to trust in God's plan and God's promises for us. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us your Son, Jesus. Help us to have hearts which trust in you, rather than us telling you what to do. Open our eyes to the places where we are needed. Guide and lead us so that we may follow you in all things. All this we ask in your Son, Jesus' name. The Holy Gospel, according to Mark, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. Jesus said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. 
Jesus called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who reminds us that God's plans are not our own. Amen. You may have heard this phrase before. It's an old aphorism. People plan and God laughs. If you've ever been around for a while, you may know that there are certain plans that you may have in life and they just don't come to fruition. Now, how we deal with that, how we're able to roll with the punches, drop back and punt if we need to, reveals a lot about our character. But it also is something that helps us to better see how God is at work in the world. Oftentimes, we can be extremely disappointed. There can be plans that we have made to go out for a picnic, and it rains, and it ruins those plans. There are some people who like to plan things meticulously. They have their entire day planned out in five or ten minute chunks where they are writing down everything that they know that they have to do. Because to deviate from the plan means that things are going to go awry and they won't know what to do with themselves or with their time. Now You may be on the other end of the spectrum where you like to just see what the world throws at you. Maybe you are simply relaxed and not worried about anything and just expecting life to deliver whatever it will. You may have the soul of an optimist and the heart of an Aquarius. It just depends on how you view life. But to be able to function in the world, you need to have a little bit of both. You need to be able to plan and think for the future. But you also have to be able to adapt to whatever is coming your way. In our gospel lesson today, we are experiencing someone who is unable to adapt, unable to hear anything different than their own perception of how the world should be and their own understanding of who Jesus should be. Before we get to this gospel passage, Jesus has asked his disciples who they say he is, and who people say he is. And Peter stands up proudly and says, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus looks at him and says, On this rock my church will stand. The proclamation of who Jesus is as the Messiah is foundational to our church. But then Jesus starts teaching that he is going to suffer that he will be killed and will rise again. And Peter takes him aside and looks at Jesus and says, you are being foolish. You've got to stop this. You're not making much sense. There are times in our lives when God just simply doesn't make sense, when what is going on around us, the tragedies that we endure, don't make sense. We wonder where God is and what God is doing in the world. When we had plans, I'm sure all of you had plans for the year 2020. Over a year ago, we had great plans for a Lenten gathering series called Feasting on the Word. And it was about gathering together with groups of people to eat and break bread and to talk about our faith journey together during Lent to practice devotional practices with one another, to pray with one another, to hand dip our own candles that we could light while we pray. Sounds great. 
And then COVID happened. And all of those plans had to be shelved. It's not fair. It's not right. Our fellowship missed out on a great Lenten season. But God's plans are different than our own. What we may have thought was going to happen in the future may not come to pass. And that is okay. Because we trust in a God who makes promises to us. Just as God promises Abraham and Sarah that they will be the parents of many generations and many nations, God promises to send a Messiah to us. Now our understanding of what the Messiah is going to do may be different than what God intended for Jesus to do. Peter's really excited. He's been walking alongside Jesus, hearing Jesus' powerful teaching, his preaching, watching as demons are driven out and people are healed. The lame walk, the blind can see, the dead rise again. But for Jesus to say that he will suffer and to die is too much for Peter. And truthfully, it's too much for many of us to think about the fact that Jesus had to suffer. We like to keep Jesus as a tiny baby in the manger. If you've ever seen Talladega Nights, the ballad of Ricky Bobby, there's a great scene where they are praying. And Ricky Bobby says, I like to pray to the baby Jesus. Baby Jesus doesn't challenge us. Baby Jesus doesn't have to suffer on our behalf. The truth is that as theologians of the cross, we understand that God's deep and abiding love for all of humanity and for us is shown most clearly and simply in Christ's suffering on the cross. Jesus didn't have to die. Jesus chose to die to take on the pain of our sin and suffering on the cross, to die and rise again to give us new life. And it is in that suffering that we understand God's love completely. And we know that Christ's fully human side understands our suffering. Our plans are not God's plans. It turns out that God's plans always work out far better than we ever expected. Now, at the time, it, it, it doesn't seem like it. At the time, as we are going through these difficulties, these tragedies, the grief that we experience from loss, from death, it is hard for us even to experience God as near to us. But God continues to be present. God continues to work through all things for the good of those who love and believe in God. That is a promise that is made to us. The challenge for us is to trust in God's leading and the promises that God has for us. But when we make plans and they don't happen, being able to ask God for a new direction or a new vision. I'm standing here today in front of you not because I knew that I was going to be a pastor when I sprung from the womb. I was sure that I was going to be a Broadway star. I went to Oregon State University and I majored in speech communications. I have a BS in speech communication. I've showed my degree in another gospel interruption that I did. But God had other plans for me. Interestingly enough, the many things that I have learned along the way about myself, the skills that I picked up in my undergrad in life, I continue to find that God is able to use those in me to proclaim the gospel. And the same thing is for you. The journey that you have gone on, the disappointments, the plans that did not happen, 
are times when we are strengthened. And when we suffer, we understand that God knows our suffering. It's almost like a refining fire. It makes us tougher. So that when difficulties come our way, we can know that we will survive. Jesus says to the disciples and to Peter, anyone who wishes to follow me must take up their cross. That's not exactly the plan that most people have when they decide they want to become part of a Christian fellowship. The challenge for us as people of faith is to understand that because we believe in the promises of God, it does not insulate us from the troubles of this world, from the sinfulness that we experience on a daily basis, our own sin and the sin of our neighbors. We are not called to come into this world to transform other people or to fix the sin that surrounds us. We are called to live in this world and to proclaim the forgiveness of sin. When we encounter this sinful brokenness in the world, when we suffer in our own lives, we are strengthened. We know that all of these troubles that we have seen help to refine us and renew us so that we can face whatever else may be coming. We may be able to even look at these troubles that are on our way and say, I have seen this before, I think I can make it through. Whatever our plans, they pale in comparison to the plans that God has for us. Sometimes it takes us looking over our shoulder, looking back to see the journey that we have been, the places and the people that we have encountered that have helped to sculpt and shape us as clay in the potter's hands to make us people of God who are not perfect, but who are redeemed, who with our own scars and brokenness and tragedy can help others who are coping at this time and in this place with God's plans versus their own. Whatever may be happening in your life at this time, whatever is going on, I need you to hear that God's love never fails for you. And that Christ's suffering on the cross redeems us. And when we suffer and cry, Christ suffers and cries and weeps alongside us. God is not far off and distant and doesn't care about our pain. God is here and now and near. The promise that we receive of eternal life, of hope that things will be better is important for us to remember. And it's important for us to help people to see here and now that the world can be better here and now. That the kingdom of God is at hand. But it takes giving up our own sense of a need to control God in some way. Because honestly, there are not enough prayers, there are not enough coins you can put into the vending machine to make God do what you want to do. But there is a very dangerous and difficult prayer that we can pray. Your will be done. And that's a difficult prayer because it means that we give up our own understanding of how plans should go And we trust in God to lead and to guide us. Now, it doesn't hurt to have a vision for how we would like to proclaim the gospel to the world. To decide that we want to go out and to help those who are in need. To welcome the foreigner, the sick, the widow, and the orphan. But we also have to respond to where God is leading us. And trust in the plans that God has for us. Amen. And now, may the peace which passes all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
side to walk upon this guilty sod and to become the Lamb of God. Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. Oh, wash me in your precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Gift of love, we crucified, we laughed and scorned him as he died. Be the care, dreamed of fraud, and sacrificed the Lamb of God. Oh, Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all who are in need. 
Holy God, your gift of grace is for all people. Give confident faith to all the baptized that they may follow you wholeheartedly. Give new believers joy in your promises and give hope and courage to those who suffer for their faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All the ends of the earth worship you. Preserve and protect all that you have created. Teach us to find wonder and joy at your mighty works and to join you in tending to creation's well-being. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You rule over the nations. Raise up advocates for peace and justice within and between nations. Give life where hope seems dead. Call into existence new realities we cannot even imagine. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In Jesus, you joined humanity in suffering and death. Reveal to all the depth of your love shown in the suffering on the cross. Accompany all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Restore all who are sick. Give comfort to those who grieve. Bring vindication for victims of injustice, exploitation, and oppression. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You made Abraham and Sarah the ancestors of a multitude of nations. Bless parents and grandparents, foster parents and adoptive parents, and all the children who look to them for care and guidance. Console those who deal with infertility. And continue to guide all who have been entrusted in the care of children. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Be with us, O Lord, as we continue to endure this pandemic. Hear our lament as we grieve and as we mourn all that we have lost. We await the day of Christ's coming in glory. Lead us by the example of all the saints whom you have called to take up their cross and follow you, that together we may find our lives in you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus' blood and righteousness.
Thank you so much for joining us for worship today. Please be sure to check out our website and our Facebook page to keep up to date on our most recent mission and ministry information, including our Wednesday evening community gatherings with other ELCA congregations during Lent. And now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you and grant you peace. Go in peace and trust in God's promises. Thanks be to God.